you're in the market for a new webcam and you want to stop using your password or pin to log into your windows machine well you can do that with a windows hello supporting webcam so today i'm going to take a look at three different business class webcams that do just that first one is the logitech brio 4k one of the first webcams to support windows hello login and i've got the dell ultra sharp 4k also supporting windows hello and finally, if you don't want to break the bank and just want to spend in the $50 to $70 range, there's even the Lenovo 510 FHD webcam that supports Windows Hello Login as well. So let's go. Okay, so when you think of Windows Hello supporting cameras, at least when I do, I always think they're going to be more than $100. The most expensive one I bought was well north of $200. It was the Dell UltraSharp 4K, probably going for a little bit less now these days. Um, but the Logitech Brio, also traditionally a fairly expensive camera, also supports 4K like the Dell. But then there's some other less expensive cameras that you can get, and one of them is the Lenovo. And Lenovo's always had great products for both business and consumer sides of the market. This one has a nice privacy shutter built into it. It has kind of the uh, Surface or Microsoft accessories kind of coloring these days in terms of the plastics. It is a little bit plasticky in terms of its build quality. There's a friction foot with friction on both sides. Um, the nice thing I do like about the mount is that it articulates up and down and pivots so you can get a good frame out of it. And surprisingly, given that it's say about a $50-ish webcam, it's $44.79 on Lenovo's website right now, it has a detachable USB-C interface on the back, but one over 2.9 inch sensor, stereo micro -ray. So what I want to do is actually test all of these different cameras. First, I'll show you what they look like in their default settings before tuning or tweaking the image. Then I'll show you what they look like after tweaking the image. And we're going to start with the Lenovo 510 FHD camera. All right, so this is the Lenovo's default image and its built-in microphone just to see what it looks like and what it sounds like without anything tweaked whatsoever. Okay, so this is the Lenovo's tuned image. So just to go over some of the things that I've done, I kept all the filters, everything zeroed out on the OBS side, but in the camera controls, the normal UVC camera controls for Windows, most of them are exposed. The only thing that's not really exposed of note is focus. So the main thing that I set was actually turning off backlight comp so it doesn't compensate for the backlight, which basically turned down some of the um, noise and grain that I saw behind me. Also darkened up the image a bit, which I actually wanted in this case. Uh, brightness is at 189. The contrast is at 151. The hue, I bumped it up a little bit from 0 to 3. Saturation, default 100. And sharpness at 6, just to give it a little bit more sharpness than 0. Then gamma at 54. And I have white balance, automatic white balance turned off. And I have it set at 4756. My lights are about 5000 kelvins but I've got a little bit of light bouncing off a wall that I think is giving it a little bit more warmth. So I need it just around 4,800. And like I said, the backlight composition's turned off and this is what it looks like and this is what it sounds like. And to go over the sounds of it as well, what I tweaked, I actually um, turned the mids up one and a half decibels and the bass tones up three decibels in OBS's three band uh, equalizer on the microphone just to see what that would do to the audio. All right, so the Lenovo 510 FHD did pretty well. So let's move on to the Logitech Brio 4K with all the recent firmware updates and everything applied to it. Okay, so these are the default settings at 1080p60 in this case for the Logitech Brio 4K Pro webcam and its built-in microphone, just so you can see and hear what it sounds like. So I've taken the brightness, everything was kind of default 128. I've taken the brightness down to 106. Contrast down to 108. Saturation is quite a bit down at 73. The sharpness I've got down at 75. And there's still a little bit of background noise uh, behind me. It's probably because the frame's a bit darker and the lighting back there is a bit darker. But it's down a little bit in terms of trying to compensate for some of that grain and noise. Then I've got the white balance at uh, 4940, around, right around 5000 uh, kelvins. And in OBS, because gamma is not available uh, through the camera settings, I set the gamma down to minus 0.44. The microphone, I did do some filtering on that as well. So I basically dropped the high end. It was a bit sibilant, so I dropped that down 
minus 1.5, brought the mids up to plus 1.5, and brought the bass tones up in the three band EQ and OBS to plus three, so that it sounds a little bit fuller in terms of the onboard microphone array. Okay, so that was the Logitech Brio 4K. Last but not least, let's move on to the Dell UltraSharp 4K. Again, I've applied all of the recent firmware and software updates to that to see what kind of image I can get out of it. Okay, this is the Dell UltraSharp webcam's default image. There is no onboard mic, so the audio is coming from my Shure MV7. Um, a couple things I had to do in terms of tuning the image. Uh, I had to turn off the auto white balance and boost it up to about 5,000 kelvins. I took the brightness down a bit. I bumped up the sharpness and contrast just a hair and then also brought down the saturation on the webcam. And this is what the image looked like. The reason why I'm recording with Dell Peripheral Manager, by the way, is because in OBS, for some reason, the camera it just looked like it had hardly any dynamic range at all. So there were no shadows or anything. My face looked like that just had a couple of stops of dynamic range. Um, I didn't really see even the Lenovo, the, the um, Lenovo camera that I recorded prior to this looked a lot richer in terms of the shadowing and, and kind of the additional detail that it had. So I got a little bit more of that through the peripheral manager for some reason versus from OBS. Okay, so there is one more thing that I have to do, which is make sure that all three of these cameras work with Windows Hello facial recognition. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you enroll a pin on your device, a local login pin. You might think it sounds less secure than a password, but it is actually more secure because it's asymmetric. It's different on your device than say your password that you used to sign into your Microsoft account. There's no way that someone can get it from an online source because it's only local to your device. So once you have your pin set up, then you can go into sign in options and facial recognition. At that point, you can add your camera. Now what it's gonna ask you for because you've got your pin set up is one more time to get your pin. And then when you get started with the actual facial recognition, it's going to identify your face and make sure that it can use it to log into your device. And all three of these will do the exact same thing. And once that runs, and it's gonna take somewhere in the, around 20 seconds or so for it to do that pass, then you can lock your computer. And depending on whether or not you've checked the automatically dismiss the lock screen of Windows recognizes your face, you can have it either automatically sign you in on boot with Windows, or you can have it so that you uh, use a, a key or a space bar, for example, to kind of dismiss the login screen once Windows Hello recognizes you. I've done that here, and I'm in. All right, so I wasn't feeling great about the Dell UltraSharp 4K. I couldn't get the image to look that great using OBS or even the Dell Peripheral Manager at 1080p 60. So I decided to re-record an additional section in 4K 30 with HDR turned on just to see if I can get some more dynamic range out of it. So this is that footage from the Dell UltraSharp 4K. Okay, so this is the Dell UltraSharp webcam recording this time at 4K30 using the onboard microphone from my Surface and the 4K30 settings that I've just tweaked a bit to improve things like setting the focus to um, manual focus. All right, so final thoughts on all these different cameras. Well, I think it was pretty obvious and kind of the elephant in the room is that Dell uh, UltraSharp 4K didn't seem like it could output 4K, even though a lot of people give me grief because I tend to output my videos at 1080p 60 and not 4K, there are reasons why. Like if you look at this camera right now, which is doing 1080p 60 through my Sony ZV-E10, it is a thousand times better, and I bet you the pixel density is a thousand times better than the 4K camera, and you can see it if you put them side by side. I would say the Logitech Brio has the optics and clarity to legitimately call itself a 4K camera. I'm loving the camera now. I used to not like it because I always like Homer Simpson with the uh, white balance and the coloring. But now with the new firmware updates and dialing that image in, the Logitech Brio is probably my new favorite uh, camera, even though I used to dislike it in the past. And I would say, you know, you should probably invest in that camera if you want something with Windows Hello support. It is a known quantity and a good camera now. 
Um, and I would say if you want something more at a budget level, I'm still surprised if you saw my um, Lenovo Essential FHD review, that was an amazing camera at about $25 to $30. You're adding $15 more to that effectively, and you're getting uh, Windows Hello biometric login support, so you have to type your PIN or your password anymore. It's a pretty crazy, amazing value. Um, either of those cameras are going to be good for you. I would say the Brio is a little bit better because it's you know, capable of true 4K and a, a bit clearer image, obviously. So those are my two recommendations. If you like this video, if you got value from it, be sure to give me a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And also check out this video on screen where I actually go through all the different 4K gimbal webcams so you can see which one is my favorite of that lot. And we'll see you soon.